Peter Rowlett, a.k.a. Pistol Pete, the leader and founder of Sex, Money, and Murder, a blood gang originating from the Soundview Projects in the Bronx, New York. In the future, I plan to do a full-length film project on Pistol Pete. But right now, real quick, I want to give y'all two things that I learned from Pistol Pete. Now, these things, myself included, there are many people that aspire to be a successful entrepreneur. I'm going to be using examples from Pete Life. Um, I guess these things could be a part of, some would say, his crimes. To me, I consider them part of his story. But I'm going to be using things from that side of his life but applying them how they can be used in a legitimate manner and keying in on the significance of their use. Number one, one smart thing that Pistol Pete did when him and his crew was getting real money, they set up a payroll. That's something that people who start legitimate businesses don't even do most of the time. What's the significance of that, Blaze? Okay, when you work on someone else's job, every time you get paid, what is one week, two week, uh, they cut that check, they have a payroll. So what that is, is taxes are being taken out of your check every time you get paid. Uh, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, uh. Those types of things. When people start entrepreneurships, a lot of time they have a tendency to calculate their taxes at the end of the year because it's different when you're working for yourself. You could make some type high gross, but you haven't been taking those taxes. Now, for me, you know, working on another job, I know the payroll system well. And I know like, OK, if this amount is taken, this many thousand for this, this many for that. And you have dependents. I know how to calculate to like, okay, I'm going to have this amount in taxes. I'm going to get this many thousand back. I'm going to get that many thousand back. So me knowing that game and knowing that system, going into entrepreneurship, it was like, okay, you're not just going to have the simplicity of that W that W2 because you're filing different. And you may, as a entrepreneur, be seeing a, a little bit more money or a lot more money. But when you set up a payroll, and you have that those deductions taken out of your earnings right away every one week, every two weeks, however it's set up, however the company you want to work to, it helps out because now you're able to a uh, figure ahead of time, okay, I'm having this much taken out for taxes, federal taxes. I'm having this much taken out for Social Security and other expenses. Okay, you can kind of graph and calculate what you're going to get in a return. Or it takes away from the headache of at the end of the year, you trying to figure out, well, I should have been paying this for this. I should have been, it's already being done for you. So when you come to the end of the years, you use that payroll, that W-2 or, or whatever form you get now from that um, payroll, it's easy to calculate your taxes. And if you getting some back or you understand the concept of dependence, it's easy for you to calculate you getting this many thousand every year it just makes it a lot easier instead of um putting the burden completely on you figuring what should be at the end of the year because i've seen some people with independent cleaning companies independent hair companies or things they self-employed and they saving receipts and all this trying to calculate what they need and their expenses at the end of the year and, and making it together as opposed to just getting that payroll and you good, you straight, you know you on point. Plus, you able to kind of calculate your books to where like, all right, I'm going to project and shoot for me to get this. And it's going to be all possible. And you have legal documentation because you're getting that pay stub and that payroll company sending them, um, you know, them stubs to you. So it's a lot easier. So that's one thing I learned from Pete now that they was doing that was brilliant. And like I said, you're able to do that legitimately. So 
looking at some of the things he did, you're still able to take that stuff into a legitimate field and, 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 and use it for the benefit of your ventures. So basically to sum it up, it's like basically putting everything on autopilot. Like even my fellas out there, let's say if you paying child support, you set up that payroll, then you can have your child support payments automatically deducted every time you pay yourself. So you ain't got to worry about going to the courthouse or trying to fill it and find time to do it online or you ain't got to never worry about forgetting to pay. Everything is taken care of for you. Number two, I seen this in Pete by studying his history, studying the moves he made, studying the things he did and how he got his name, basically. But the number two thing that I observed in Pistol Pete that myself included and anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur should do is whatever enterprise or business that you want to go into, it would be of the greatest of benefit to you and your business if you can create and have a name in that enterprise before starting a business in it. An example, outside of Pistol Pete, and then I get the Pete, it's like, okay, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is considered by many to be the greatest basketball player that ever lived. Michael Jordan has that status in basketball. He made his name in basketball. Now, having a name like that being considered the greatest in a sport, it would be to the highest benefit to Michael Jordan if he went into a business or field that the name he created would be an accolade. Being if he went into any field surrounding or involving basketball, Michael Jordan becoming the coach for a team. That team will have great status from its inception because of the status of Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan going into the basketball shoe business. Jordans, to in my opinion, are so popular for two reasons. One, the designs and the iconic material and use of materials in the shoe. And second, and the most important, is because Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player that ever lived. So it gives the shoe that status, that name. This is the shoe of the greatest player that ever lived. That is uh, something that I took from Pistol Pete. Pistol Pete, like his name suggests, was known to put in that work. Pete was known to get his hands dirty. He was the type that he could send some people to do it, but he had no problem doing it himself. He had no problem showing you how it needed to be done. Pistol Pete was the Michael Jordan of guns. You know what I'm saying? Pistol Pete was really that dude in the street. He had the top name. His name run the loudest in his area. So when you have someone like that who built like that and known for that, for known to excel in that, you know, he built that reputation. Kind of like when the 48 Laws of Power, it, it says reputation spill less blood. So your reputation can be effective in the field you have it in to where he was he was larger than life so him being larger than life by himself whatever enterprise he chose to go in his name was going to carry that reputation and go forward and proceed and meet and knock down doors before the organization got there so it's like pete used to call himself the gorgeous gangster blazing billy he was flamboyant. So he already had a name for being about that business. Then he was flamboyant, you know what I'm saying, and braggadocious. So when you have that alpha male like that 
who really bought that word, who braggadocious, then he starts an enterprise. The field of enterprise that he got into, like his organization, the namesake, sets money and murder. So when you have the top gun and the top dude who putting it down, then you start an enterprise where you getting money and you putting it down. Your organization can't help but be one of the biggest. It can't help but flourish because you went into an enterprise that you had the highest reputation. So from a legal standpoint, if you want to go into an enterprise and you want that enterprise to be successful, if you can, before starting your venture, develop a name and reputation in that field. If you want to be a baker and before starting a baking business, you get your name out there and everybody know you make the best cakes, the best desserts, you specialize into de you specialize in detail and design and you make a name for yourself and everybody know you for that. Once that's done, you create a business and let everybody know, okay, you open for business. You got a bakery. They're going to be knocking your doors down for, for business because they know how good of a baker you are. You're known for the best cakes in the land. Your designs are second to none. So that's something I seen highlighted in Pistol Pete. And I use Pete as an example why I drew, I drew that from because they say Pete used to emphasize to those who he who followed him, like, you got to be about your business. You got to lay your murder game down. You got to really be about that. And he would give examples. Like, they say he had this thing, the wet T-shirt contest, where you had to leave the shirt wet as if there was a contest going on as far as the shirts getting wet. And he was known to be the big dog on the block and to really, really be putting it down like that, like putting it down hard. Like one of the things he's most known as far as putting in work is like they said, like the end of his run, he took out Carlton Hines. Carlton Hines had a name himself as, as being like a, a legend in two games, hustling and basketball. And Pete got him. You know what I mean? So that's one thing I feel is definitely highlighted by Pistol Pete. Going into a field where you have the highest and most respected of reputations. So those have been two things I gave y'all that I learned from Pistol Pete. Like I said, 2023, I plan to release a full-length film project on Pistol Pete and others after that. But thank you.